everybody. Welcome to Maryland PPA's webinar series. Um, tonight we have a double header coming up your way. Uh, real quickly, we're going to have two speakers tonight. James Corbett will be speaking about using Instagram to drive creativity. And after that, we're going to take a short break and then bring Bruce Press on to talk about an introduction into frequency separation. Did somebody just change my screen. Um, we are viewing Paul Peterman's screen. Paul. <laughs> Paul, you're killing me, Paul. There we go. So uh, first up is James Corbett. And again, he's using Instagram to drive creativity. Uh, James is one of our newer members. And James, if you're ready, please take it away. All right, let me get rid of this Instagram window. Hang on, not Instagram. All right, so um, kind of looking forward to this. And what I'm gonna be sharing with you guys tonight is sort of my experience with Instagram. And uh, I'm not generally into the portraiture or weddings or those type of things, but I think you guys can certainly apply what I'm uh, showing tonight to those type of things. Um, I use Instagram really to drive me to keep creating. So Jill mentioned earlier that she hasn't shot much lately. Um, I've used Instagram to get me out into the backyard to go visit local gardens, those type of things. So again, if you're looking for marketing stuff, I think you can use some of this. But what I'm really gonna talk about is how I use Instagram to drive me to, to get more followers, to get more of a presence, those type of things. So tonight I'm gonna real quickly talk about my philosophy around Instagram, what the algorithm of Instagram really does for you, how it decides what gets shown. Uh, talk a little bit about communities that I think are pretty useful if you wanna join some of those on Instagram. And uh, my quick quick run through my workflow, just to show you, show you some of the tools that I use. If you've got questions along the way, speak up and uh, I'm happy to take those. Um, really around philosophy, for me, it's making sure that whatever I'm doing on Instagram is, is, is professional. I almost never post from my uh, cell camera phone. I generally do it in light, Lightroom, process it in Photoshop, uh, export it at a, at a resolution that Instagram's not gonna muck up too bad. And uh, so I don't really post personal pictures or anything of that nature. So that's sort of my philosophy is that anything I'm doing on Instagram is, is good work. James, and, are you gonna talk about how you post to yes, Instagram? Yes, yes, at the very, very end. So again, for me, I looked at it more like it was a for presence. So some of you might wanna do this, think of it as well, that your Instagram really shows that you're active, that you're posting stuff, that people are interested in it, and, and kind of what your, your stick is, what your, what your brand is. So if you look at, at my Instagram, you know, over about a three year period, I've developed 2,200, 2,300 followers. I'm following about 2,000. I've posted 793 times over that three-year period. So, you know, an ongoing presence. And then I tell everybody up front, you know, I like to put my CPP because I'm going to talk later about um, uh, PPA and some of the things they've they've reposted a few of my images. And I think it's because you let them know that you're a you're a, a member. Um, but my really thing is no theme. And I point that out because some of you are gonna to wanna to have a theme. You're gonna to wanna to post things that are along the same lines. Uh, we're gonna talk later about you know, how you get traction on Instagram and you need to mix it up. And so for me though, I, I sort of share, my thing is a diversity of eye-catching images. My work is typically, I go to art shows, I try to get in juried exhibits, I try to uh, do those type of things. And it's really a, all kinds of different art that I'm trying to create. So, and they're all, this is important, and I'll tell you guys a story at the end if we have time. But uh, to me, it's important to make sure they know the photos are by me and I register my copyrights and that prints are available. And I created my own hashtag that I use on every image that I post. Uh, one of the things you guys might think about is if you're doing weddings or portraiture, come up with a hashtag that you're going to tell your clients to use. Um, check it out, make sure nobody else is using it, make sure it's not you know, something you don't want to be associated with your, your, your business, but you, you may want to tell them what a hashtag for them to use is. And then of course I have my website. 
So presence was a big thing for me. So now I want to talk a little bit about how Instagram, I use Instagram to, to inspire, to keep me, keep me creating. So for me, it's really looking at uh, what skills, so this is an example of, so while, I'm, while I've been shut in with the uh, COVID, COVID response, um, I'm taking a, I took a macro photography class. I've never considered myself you know, much of a macro person, but uh, I've really enjoyed trying to go out, take things close up. Uh, the instructor taught, taught you how to, uh, how she does it. She sort of manually focuses and moves her body to, to shift the focus, which, you know, I'm having fun with that. Uh, that's probably not how most of us uh, focus. But in this one, I got to work with lighting, composition. She had some composition techniques to kind of get you zoomed in. Um, the mixer brush, thank you, Paul and Sandra and some others. Um, I, I work with the mixer brush on this to get out some hot spots from, from the flash. And just anyway, and then adding noise back. That was the, that was the tip of the day for, the, for those folks is uh, putting some noise back after you've done some painting. Current events, I do, I do let current events come into play sometimes. Uh, the Supreme Court ruled earlier, I think it was this week or last week, earlier last week, that uh, LGBT folks are covered under the discrimination parts of Title VII. So uh, I had fun with this one. I had a Supreme Court. I had a flag, uh, a pride flag that I took in, in San Francisco at the top of a big flagpole. So I thought, let's combine the two and do a little bit of layering, do a little bit of th that sort of thing. Uh, travel. My big, you know, my, I, I drive my husband crazy because every trip we take, the camera is always present. I'm looking for something to take uh, an image of that perhaps I can use later. This is probably not one of them because we'd violate all kinds of copyrights of theirs if I tried to um, resell this guy. Um, but this is one I just kind of travel. So what's your, your travel shtick? And I'm going to talk a little bit later. You'll notice in the um, description at the bottom, the May the 4th be with you. So we're going to talk about that a little bit later um, as far as things that might inspire you and get you more engagement. Um, you guys probably recognize Sherman. So I uh, am a member of the North Bethesda Camera Club and Jill has judged there a few times and um, so I know she knows the group. So with COVID taking over, it's like you can't do field trips. You can't really do field trips. So one of the assignments there was to, to do a field trip to your kitchen. So I was trying to figure out what in the world am I gonna take a picture of in, in my kitchen? And I have a small galley kitchen. It's a night, I live in a 1950s, 55 uh, Cape Cod. So it's a pretty tight area. And I was thinking, well, I could get my husband cause I'm doing the COVID stuff all day. So I could get him to come in and you know wash his hands and I would do something with that. And I realized there's no way, not with lighting, not with trying to get the right shot. So this one turned into, I think there's four images here. It's basically light painting. So I ended up playing with a handheld LED light to paint different parts of, parts of the image and then put those back together. So to me, that really drove the, the uh, creativity. And Sherman had been sitting on the shelf. If, if some of you don't have your CPP, they've, they've moved the, uh, PPAs moved the certified professional photographer thing to where you, you, shoot, you shoot Sherman in different poses, you know, different, with different lighting to try to show that you can control the light. So I thought, well, you know, Sherman, Sherman uh, played a later role in my creativity. And we are gonna talk a little bit later about where you can find some challenges if you're not doing uh, some other camera club or something like that. Um, what I call holidays. The, again, those themes. So may the fourth be with you. Um, the, whatever day this was, it doesn't show what day it was, but I have a calendar that shows that it was International Sushi Day. So I'm like, okay, Let's dig through the catalog. Let's see what we've taken pictures of in the past where there's a sushi uh, so I can play with that theme. Uh, this is actually from uh, Sushi Sono in, um, in Colombia. And I always try, sometimes you try it at the very end to put, you know, what's your favorite folks? But 
I didn't. I don't think I got any engagement on this. So Instagram must not have been in a in a fish mood that day. But we're going to talk more about how you might get inspired with these holidays and how you might find them. Any questions before I talk about the Instagram algorithm? Kind of rushing to make sure I have plenty of time. 45 minutes is uh, not a lot. And I, I told Craig Chase that my biggest fear was I would have too much material and not enough time. All right, so the algorithm is essentially what Instagram uses to figure out if they're gonna show your work. That's how I would probably look at it. And not surprising, this sounds all lovely and flowing. I'll give you guys a second to read it. But basically it says Instagram's gonna show people things that it thinks they're gonna love. I mean, that's the bottom line. So based on what they've done in the past, what they've looked at in the past, what they've clicked on in the past, is kind of what drives Instagram's um, sort of experience filter and what it shows folks. Um, what I would stress to you all is Instagram's not free. Everybody says, oh, Instagram is free. But for us trying to get seen and get our, our word out, you, you have to pay for it. And you pay for it either in what I call eyeballs, generating folks to look at things. You pay for it in dollars. And, and I will talk about a few hustles that, that might improve your, your, your ability to be seen. But in essence, again, I would contend Instagram's not free. You're gonna pay some way or the other. And the other word for eyeballs I use is, is engagement. So Instagram rewards you for creating engagement. So when you post something or when you interact with somebody, it's all about uh, engagement. So trying to make people love whatever it is you're doing or show love for someone else. So these are some of the key things I would, I want to spend a little bit of time going over with you. So obviously, clearly, I think you all know that when you post something, that means adding the content up to Instagram. That's only the first step. So whatever you post, you need to be thinking about how somebody's going to find it. So we're going to talk in a minute about finding hashtags. And hashtags are those, you know, what we would probably call keywords or something like that if you're not very familiar with Instagram. It's basically keywording your, your post for Instagram. You're doing their work so they know who, where to show it. Uh, people follow hashtags, so th uh, particularly things like sunrises. There's a lot of folks out there who are very much, who love sunrises. So they'll follow a number of hashtags. So anytime you post something with a sunrise, they will, it'll pop up in their feed. So you're feeding, you're feeding that love that Instagram is really trying to get folks uh, to engage in. There's mentions. So mention is like tagging. You know, if I post something from Maryland PPA, I can do an at sign Maryland PPA, and it it tags the account that the the, the association owns. So the association is going to see that someone mentioned them. So that's what a mention is. You can you can use those pretty effectively. Obviously, I mentioned earlier with mine, there's about 2,300 people following me. So you built up over time. I showed them an image. I engaged with them some way, and they felt like I was worthy of being followed. Uh, just like with Facebook, Instagram shows people that follow you the things those, those people would like. So just because you follow somebody doesn't mean they'll ever see anything you ever post. So it, it increases the opportunity, but it doesn't mean they see everything that you post. You need to do some engagement. Um, comments on a post, Instagram loves those. And we're gonna talk a little bit later when in the, in the hustle section in a way. It, your comments need to be meaningful. They need to be five, five words or more. They need to be something appropriate to the post. So don't just go on and say beautiful picture, beautiful picture, beautiful picture, you know, over and over if you're trying to get engagement, if you're trying to make Instagram love you and show stuff, they, they throw, the algorithm tosses those comments out. And I, I've seen it, it, it really does, because it's not meaningful engagement. Um, likes, likes are great, you know, go on some of these things we're gonna talk about in a minute and, and like different content. And um, I will say for all of you, 
there's an addiction that happens when you first start engaging on Instagram and you're really trying, you get addicted to the likes and you spend, you know, hours and hours on Instagram trying to create your following. So you just be cautious of that addiction because pretty soon you spent four hours of your day or some number of hours of your day trying to doing exactly what Instagram would like for you to do, which is engage and use your, and keep your eyeballs on their products and their advertising and all of that stuff. Uh, saves, people don't really do that too much, but you can drive engagement if you can get people to save your stuff, which just basically there's a little button to click and I think I'll have a screen I can show you guys. Uh, stories are something, um, if you've ever seen that, stories only live for 24 hours. So if you post something on your Instagram that's a story and that's at the top, and, I, and I'm not gonna go into this at all in the thing, I just want you guys to know what it is. You post it at the top, it lives for 24 hours, it disappears. Um, a lot of photographers I've seen do a back behind the scenes shot for a story, or they do some type of you know funny moment in that probably is not gonna end up you know in your in your portfolio, but something that kind of triggers folks to smile. Again, it only lasts 24 hours. So that's where I will post sometimes things that I take with my camera phone that aren't the highest, maybe don't meet my highest standards, but I thought they were pretty interesting and I wanted to share them just temporarily. And then lastly, videos. We're not gonna talk much about videos either, but Instagram loves those. So if you're in a position to make a video and post it, um, it Instagram generally loves that. They need to though be very short, five, five seconds, 10 seconds, um, something quick, and um, hopefully that folks will, will take a moment to view. And Instagram's gonna judge you on how long they look at it. So if you post a video and somebody immediately moves on, it's probably not gonna get as much interest as um, something that folks are really interested in. Any questions on sort of the definitions, the engagement piece? You know, my main message here is if you're gonna get on Instagram, really know all the different ways that you can engage with the platform, that you can show people love, that's really what you're trying to do, and that you can you react. So if people mention you, maybe do a story where they mentioned you, maybe do, um, you know, if they use your hashtag, sort of take that screenshot, put it in a story. So you can say to your client, thank you for sharing uh, this image on my hashtag. So I have a question. About okay. uh, so you know how when you start to, you put the hashtag in, you start to type something in, and you'll see maybe it's got a thousand users or it's got right. 100. And someone once told me it's better to go where they're not a lot of other people like in other words take the 100 versus the 1000 yeah we're going to actually talk about that later i typically and you'll see i'm, I'm jumping ahead a little bit but I, i'll search for like hashtag macro i would never use that hashtag it's going to have i don't know 13 million posts nobody's ever going to see your work there because the minute you post it there's going to be 45 people post after you so your your image is going to disappear you know, in a split second. Um, so I, it is true what, what you're saying is so you find ones that have a smaller number of following. And we're gonna talk later about this. So I, I, I don't wanna get too deep in it. I'm gonna show you how I find my hashtags and how I screen them out. Hey James. Hey, James. Yeah. Oh. James, I have a quick, was that Michael? I just have a question. How Michael. do you use the ace? Yeah, this is me, sorry. How would you use the, ace, the at symbol mentions? I never use, that's the only one I don't yeah, use. Yeah, so in your, in your um, you, you can mention somebody two different ways. You can do the at sign in the, um, the text. So I don't know if you noticed one earlier, I did at our PPA. So that's, that's the hat they mentioned, that's the account for the PPA. So you just mentioned, you just put an at sign and their um, hashtag in their account name. Okay. handle so um you know I, i'm not sure what maryland ppas is i've got it later but you know many of us probably order when we post something why not mention maryland ppa so you just put the at sign and do that so the other way to to mention someone is actually tag them in the image 
So the thing about tagging someone in the image, it actually shows up in their profile. So if you, if you get really active on Instagram, I've had people that for some reason will, will tag Epic Life images all the time. So you can go on Instagram and tell it not to show it on your profile, but um, this is probably a little more advanced for the time we've got. But th there's two ways to mention somebody. Michael, does that help you? Yeah, yeah. And, and I'll show you later where, where you really wanna use these things. Yeah, thanks. James, I have a quick question and this can be answered offline if it has to be. Your post versus your stories, should you make those all individually unique? Because I, I tend to post and then post what I post in my story. Um, I, I don't know that it matters too much. Um, I tend to like to do the story. So what I've seen stories that I find more engaging are things like, you know, a preview where they've uh, said, you know, watch for this post that's coming up. Or like I said, think about, is there a behind the scenes shot that you wouldn't necessarily want to live forever that you could use for your story and then point people to, you know, ch check out, check it out in the feed. I mean, just play with different ways. I don't know that I would do the exact same thing in both places. But I'm not sure there's anything wrong with that. I just, you might wanna play with it and see what Instagram thinks of it. And when I say what Instagram thinks of it, you can, I'll show you later how you can see, um, as long as you have a business account, how you can see what Instagram thinks of your stuff. <laughs> I don't need any better way of phrasing it. All right, so the other one, which I'm not gonna spend any time on tonight because I don't really do this. And there's a lot of people out there who have much better information for you. Um, I think Vanessa Joy has some stuff on uh, PPA. Creative Live has a bunch of stuff. Kelby, you know, all of those on. If you're if you're ever going to go, if you're ever thinking of paying for promotion, you need to learn a lot about it because you can you can pay a lot of money and hit nobody. You can hit folks in the wrong part of the country. So you really need to figure out your pay strategy if you're going to buy if you're going to buy the love of Instagram. So I'm not going to. It's not my expertise, so I set a topic for another time. And then lastly, I just want to make sure, because when you start really using Instagram, you're going to get, um, you're going to see a lot of stuff that goes on where people say, well, let me, uh, let me buy my followers, let me buy my likes, let me buy my shares. If Instagram catches you, they will ban you, uh, they will generally shadow ban you, which means you, do, you probably don't even know, but what they're doing is they're no longer showing your stuff in hashtags. They're no longer showing your stuff to followers. So if they think you're not acting, here, here's my rule. Instagram looks for humans to be doing the engagement. So if anything's going on that looks fishy to their algorithm, that looks like not a human, and, and you can do these things even as a human, don't go on Instagram and click like on a thousand, you know, 400 things or a thousand things at a session, just right in a row, because Instagram will think that's some kind of bot. You've heard the word bot. And Instagram will punish you for it. They'll stop showing your stuff to people. They'll bury you in the bottom of something. Um, so any, so this is, these are violations on Instagram. So artificial collect, collecting likes or followers, and as I mentioned earlier, posting the same thing over and over. Uh, I don't think you would trigger this, Danny, with your story and your post, but you know, just be careful if you're posting the same thing, using the same hashtags over and over. Um, for you portrait photographers and others, don't use the same hashtags every single post because Instagram will say, this is boring. I'm not gonna keep showing this guy in the algorithm or gal. So um, I, you, you brought up a great question, James, when you're talking about hashtags, how do you, and there are some people that are really good at this, how do you come up with all the hashtags that you would use in a post? I'm gonna like, show you. Are you limiting them to like one or two hashtags? Do you no, maximum out of 30? I, I use 30 in every one, I'm gonna show you here. Um, and then I hopefully none of you guys would do this is repeatedly contacting people for commercial purposes without their consent. So as I said, I get an email a week offering to, you know, make me viral, to take, to make my, you know, make my day. I ignore them all because they all 
have something behind them that's going to, I think, going to trigger Instagrams uh, to ban me. You still there, Danny? I am still here. Okay. You kind of got cut off in the middle of your sentence. I thought, have they lost me? Um, so keep going real quick. So I think this is where you guys are going to find some value, I hope, in the sense of to, to me, the way I grew my Instagram account is thinking of, of Instagram in terms of community. Where could I find, where could I make connections? How could I get other organizations to share my content or regram it or repost you'll hear? And then as my theme on the whole presentation was, you know, where do, where do I find inspiration? Can some of these things give me some inspiration? So the, the first up is a and I love this one. This is really great when you're first starting out. It's a, an organization called JJ Community. And there's probably others that are more specific to some of your interests. I don't know them, but you can probably find them. And what they do is every single day, they post a theme. And let me see, I can zoom in. So they post a theme every morning. I, I don't know what time it is anymore because I've kind of, I don't do it as much anymore. But, um, you know, here I think was week's best. Let me back up. It was week's best. So usually that's a Saturday or Sunday they do that. And they put this uh, tag, this hashtag that you need to use, which is hashtag JJ Forum. And every day they increment that. So I probably cut it off. Is it still here? Uh, yeah, I don't have the one for this day. But let's say it's JJ Forum under JJ underscore Forum 3007. So you, what you do is you post your best picture and you tag it JJ Forum, as it says there. And their rule is that you go out, and if you look down at the very bottom of the screen, you go out for every one image that you tag, you go find another image in that tag, and you comment on two of them, and you like three others. So it's not a heavy lift. So you post one image, you click on that hashtag, and you go look at, you know, look through it, find a couple of people, and um, comment on their image. I would say, again, make that comment meaningful, you know, five or six words, don't, don't shortchange them, and then go um, like three others. And what I would do here too is look at the content. If you find somebody you really like, this group really focuses on small, smaller accounts. So if you find somebody you like, you know, follow them. They'll probably, they might follow you back and you might make a connection that you can continue to, to build upon. It'll continue to like your stuff and you can continue to engage with them. So it's a good place to get sort of that um, engagement. Uh, hubs are another thing and, and th there's a few of them. I mean, these, I just threw some up, but you'll find that there's sites that someone created like this one has 423,000 followers. So what they do, if you use their hashtag, they may repost your image. Um, what I do more there, I don't know that you see as much back necessarily on it, but if, if they post your image, go through the followers, go through the folks who like that image and maybe follow a few of them. Check out their content. If their content's good, you know, engage with them and, you, and, you may, and you'll start building your following, hopefully with quality people, quality you know, humans that can engage you the way hashtag, the way uh, Instagram likes. Uh, black and white. They're usually themed, just so you know. Portrait, here's a portrait mood one, uh, 393,000 followers if you use their hashtag. And usually you have to follow them too. So you, you probably follow the instructions that they give you. Uh, Visit Maryland, I've had a few things picked up by Visit Maryland. Um, Exposed DC is another one of my favorite. Uh, I've actually been in a few of their shows in underground over in Crystal City and other places. Uh, IGDC is probably the biggest one in the district, in the DC themed. So again, if you take some things outside, you know, you may very well get some of your content featured. And again, use that to drive some engagement. See if you can find some folks and make some friends through that. Oh, here's the mentions, uh, Michael. So basically um, in this one, I took the macro class, I told you guys. So this is one of the images I took as an assignment for the macro class. So in my comment for the image, I thanked uh, the instructor, Photography Lori and Capital Photography Center. And you know, I went ahead and threw in 
for kicks, uh, Canon, Platypod that I used, LoomCube, Suray USA, and MagMod that I used to kind of do the creative background and all. You, you need never know. They might share your stuff. And I got, you know, good response. Capital Photography Center chimed in. Lori, the instructor, loved it. So again, that's engagement. It will cause Instagram usually to show your image to more people. So that's what you're fishing for. Um, and then I got, you know, nice reward in a way. Uh, Capital Photography Center reposted it, made me their student showcase for that Saturday. That was after it. Um, I didn't, but what I should have done is gone to the look at these 54 people and figured out, you know, are any of them local? Are they good folks to get to know? Should I follow them? Should I engage in some of their content and sort of build that following? And so the reason you might do the mentions is the, if you look at this, so uh, Suray USA has 1775 followers all the way up to Canon, which has 3.1 million. Um, I will say you pro I'm probably wasting my time with Canon because Canon has a whole process where you have to submit your image outside of Instagram, sign off on them using it. I mean, they're, the likelihood of getting featured on Canon is probably not worth the effort is, is my assessment. You guys may have a different take on that. Uh, let's see. Um, one last thing I will mention is sort of in the underground of, of Instagram, which you may get opportunities. There are these things called engagement pods. And the way those work is they're a group that somebody started, like-minded folks, common interest, that will set up a telegram is on the left side. Um, oh, telegram's on the left side. Uh, Instagram, um, there's an Instagram remote wanderlusters on Facebook that's doing the same thing. And so what basically happens there, if you, you get it, you often need to get invited to the group. So that's why finding these folks and getting engaged with them is, is useful because if you get in one of these pods, you basically post on Instagram, you share your link in the pod, and then everybody jumps on and likes it and comments on it and engages with it as humans. So Instagram, you know, in general, uh, treats them uh, very favorably like, like real engagement. I will tell you, I've done a bunch of these and everyone I've ever done has fizzled out over time. So it's kind of a never ending search if that's something you wanna do. And uh, that really drives me to this. I think we should do some engagement with each other. And that's what I would encourage us to do as a follow on to this discussion. Um, I'm gonna do a shout out to Craig uh, Chase on this one. Because what you can do, if you've got somebody you, you like, or you know, or you want to support, you can actually follow them. So there's an extra step you can take in Instagram that says, I want to know every time this person does certain things. And you can actually set it. If you look on the right-hand side, uh, you know, Craig, I've marked as my close friend. And every time he posts something, I get a notification. So I immediately jump on it, like it. Uh, Sorry, Craig, if I don't always comment, but um, I probably should. I should give you, you know, some the love that Instagram is looking for me to give you. Um, our PPA, I mentioned that earlier. So if you want them to, to re regram your work or repost your work, they're looking for you to tag, tag it, our PPA, and I'm pretty sure they probably want you following them as well. Uh, I ha have had a few things, uh, two or three images shared by them. They're now following me. So I, I made their 634 uh, followers that they're following. And um, they like my stuff pretty regularly. So you know, get a little of engagement from our professional association. Um, Maryland PPA, probably need to do a little bit of work. <laughs> but I do think it's an opportunity here uh, to, to to uh, continue to work this site. Um, I don't know if we're all following it. I don't know if Maryland PPA is following all of us, but I think there's an opportunity for some community here. Maybe we just need an expert to take it over for us. <laughs> I, I, I was afraid of that. I almost deleted it at the last minute. Uh, we can talk, Danny. Um, so I'm James, gonna show you guys. James, it just sounds like you became the committee chair for the uh, <laughs> Maryland PPA Instagram account. Yeah, um, I think I'm at the 31 minute mark according to my timer. 
So I'm going to real quickly run you guys through my, my workflow. And this is not the mobile app workflow. The mobile app, I think you probably can all figure it out, but you can see how this is going to connect. I did it this way because I want to show you a couple of the tools that, that I really like and use. Um, as I said, I, um, I do all of mine through Lightroom. So I process the image. We're not obviously going to cover that. I have a um, hard drive, a, a published service that I set up. And I'm sure some of you will pause here for a minute. Uh, no. So I, I'll zoom in on this one. So this is my published service. So I send them out as JPEGs, 100%. Um, you could probably do 80 or whatever you wanted there. The key thing on this screen is the 1080p pixel, the 1080 pixels. Um, that's generally what, face, uh, what Instagram will downsample your image to. So there's no point in there's no point in the post piece of sending anything up there greater than that. You're you're going to end up having Instagram re rescan resample your image, which I'd rather kind of put it up in the size that I want, and that way it looks the way I intended for it to look. Um, that obviously does result in a little less resolution, but again, they would do it for you if you didn't do it yourself. So I, that exports to the cloud. I, I send all of mine to Dropbox. You could send them somewhere else. And the reason I do this is sometimes I will uh, export a few different images. If I work on three or four, I know I'm gonna use them in Instagram, so I'll go ahead and export them. So if I do decide I wanna post it while I'm sitting, you know, well, you're not sitting in the Starbucks anymore. But you know, back in the day, if I was sitting in the Starbucks and wanted to quickly post one, I, I, I have it, in Dropbox, you can use whatever you know works for you. Um, so here's a quick one on the hashtag search. I actually um, actually made a video, and I, we'll do that in just a second. It's like a two-minute video, so I'm, hopefully we can stay keep moving. So maximum of 30 per post. Again, I typically try to get my full value of the 30. I don't know that it hurts or helps to use less, or or you can't use more. Um, Avoid the common one. I think we talked about this earlier. Anything with probably over a million posts, I probably don't use that one. Um, research, research, research before you use them. You'd be surprised things like green frog, you know, making this up, that it means absolutely not a green frog. It's some Korean pop group that, you know, you'd be really surprised. And again, look to those communities. Where can I, you know, do I need to use our PPA tag on this one? Do I think it's worthy of um, PPA, you know, sharing? So think about your communities. Uh, all right, so here real quickly. So what I typically do is I go on the desktop and I will search for macro was this example I used earlier. And like I said, you need to check them out. So I control click on every one of them that I find and make sure, go look at it real quick and make sure there's not a surprise there. We're probably gonna be fine with macro, but if you were doing, um, you know, July 4th, you know, you might wanna check those because some, some of those go kind of off the deep end. Um, so I'm gonna go through here, I'm gonna click on them. I'm not gonna do all of that. So I copied them at that point and then I paste them into Word I convert them to text, and then I clean it up. I put a space between each. You'll see me doing that in a second because it always copies them with no space. Because I'm going to use Word, or you could use some other so uh, software. I'm going to use Word later to count the number of hashtags. Obviously, you could do that by yourself or not. Uh, but just for me, uh, I always feel like it's easier if it counts it for me. So my image that I was posting was a macro. So what else might it be? You know, I had a nice uh, bokeh in that. So let's go and take a quick look and see what Instagram suggests uh, for bokeh. Uh, there you hey, go. Hey James, are yes. there are there apps that will help you with your hashtags? There are. Uh, I've tried a few and they get stale, or they they request they. They recommend the same ones over and over, or you still have to do this process of what are the three different things I want to highlight. Hey, James. Yes. I've been using the same three hashtags that all I've been doing, and I thought that was it because it's like three million hits, like for still pound still photography. But my question is, 
Should you use a different set of hashtags for every different post? Well, they may not, your, your post may not ever be seen if you're using one of these major hashtags. So just keep that in mind. I, w I vary by every post. Now I may use a, like the macros that I'm, I've been posting this series of macros. I may go from macro and bo bokeh to flowers and macro. I mix it up. But how do you determine a good hashtag from a bad one? Is it because that's... I I, I, to me, the bad ones that I don't typically use are the ones with, you know, 10 million um, posts. So you so try to that, come up with something original then it looks like. No, I, you use the ones that are out there if you want people to notice you, because these are going to be the ones that people are following. Okay. So, and, and a few of these like macro underscore captures, you may yep. find that you may find there's a hub behind it. There's somebody who has a site that's actually macro captures. And they may repost yours if you use it. I sometimes used to Google hashtags and then I just use that, but I may, yeah. okay, that'd be better than just a three same, okay. Yeah, you can do that too. Google's fine. Uh, check them out. Do not just cut and paste them is the only thing I will tell you. And so you see here, I threw my Epic Life images on there. I use that for every single thing I post. I think that's it for this one, hang on. Um, Ooh, wrong place. And I I post every I use Evernote. You could probably use OneNote. There's a bunch of different things, but I save every hashtag set I use into one file, so later I can search. So if I'm thinking about my flowers or uh, buka or or something like that, I can go here and find them. So James, I would. Have you checked out? Have you checked out later? Uh yeah, later later certainly a good one. Uh, some of those are pay services. I just haven't felt the need. Well, later, um, later's free up to, I don't know, 15 posts a month or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I keep track of everything. So I'm going to real quickly, I think I'm at 744. I can I bring us in close. So uh, I'm a big, big fan of a product called Instagram. I mean, sorry, Icono Square. Um, I will tell you, you know, Bruce, now that you mentioned it, they're – if you're going to use one of those services, check to make sure they're a partner with Instagram. Um, those, those authorized partners can do things directly with Instagram legally. I'll call it legally without violating those, uh, without creating a violation that some, some services can't. So if you're using things like Later, or I think there's Grum, there's a bunch of different things out there. I really like Instagram mainly because when I went out looking, it did what I wanted to do, which was basically analytics and scheduling for a very, very little money. It's $81 a year. So what you get here is um, just different kind of engagement. So I, I joined Instagram April 26 of 2017. All of these hundred percent would be different if I picked a different period, but it tells you, you know, what's your growth or, or rate up or down. So this is nice. Um, I'll show you probably not that one is it's not the absolute best one. This one I use pretty regularly. Um, it tell it, it analyzes all of your posts and tells you which one's got the most engagement. So I post a lot at um, you know 8 a.m. ish, which is those things at the top. I don't know if you can see my arrow or not. Um, and then at for the entire time I've been on Instagram, the best time for me to post is Tuesdays at 6 p.m. Um, if I change the period, that also changes. So more recently, that's not the right answer, but that's that if I looked at my entire Instagram time, um, it shows some chart, nice charts like your average engagement rate, um, the like history. You can tell when I really work things and when I didn't. The comment history is varied over time. Uh, I guess in 2018, I was really into trying to get comments, um, post distribution over the years, um, post scheduler. So this is the other piece of Icona Square that, that I absolutely love, which is you can schedule posts in advance. So, and it, it provides you a few other things. So you saw my thing earlier, may the fourth be with you. Um, they actually misspell the hashtag by the way, which is why you research your hashtags. So if you notice, they left something out. So, but anyway, each day it tells you at the top, is there a particular, you know, quote, holiday going on during that period? And do you wanna, you know, maybe do something themed to that? 
But the other thing it really does, it stars. There's this box next to May the 4th be with you that has a star in it. That's the best time to post for me. Um, there's a better one. You know, that's the actual description. And then it started doing one other thing, which I think is pretty cool. It tells you when the most of your followers are online. So if you miss one of those starred windows, you got another opportunity with that. Or in this case, they line up. So that's kind of nice. Um, so if you click on one of those boxes, what you get is this upload. So I'm going to finish what I started earlier. So you get this chance to upload. You click the plus sign um, on this. And if you see here, it repeats again. They recommend 1080 uh, pixels. Uh, the minimum size is 500. Maximum is, 100, is 15 meg, uh, 150 there. <clears throat> and I said I would mention this earlier. So if you're posting on Instagram, these the ones with the, the um, lightning bolt are your best sizes. They will work, they will show well on the screen. They're not some funny border or some other problem with the display. So if you want your image to be optimized for Instagram, it's one of those. So it's square. So if people say I can only post square, that's not true. You can post something that's not square, uh, but the preview may be square. The portrait size is four by five. The landscape is four by three. And I, I love panos. So a lot of times I will do this 1.91 1 to one. And it is precise to that. It's not two to one, it's not something else. So you see your image um, and then I paste in from my other work, the thing at the caption at the top. Um, I, th that's the time I want it to post. I want it to automatically post. And um, I would encourage you to always do the geolocation. People can actually find your work by the location. Um, so I always, pretty much always tag something by its location. And then you hit schedule and it, goes off to the cloud and it will schedule it at that, that time. Um, and then one other thing that I think is interesting, and this is probably something you guys would really want to pay attention to, is, is, is what's loved by folks on Instagram for you. And so I, you can tell here people like the colors, they like the sunsets, they like the waterfalls. Uh, I happen to like those too. So I do some of that work but it kind of lets you know that when I post my flower or what I just posted, I'm not gonna see this kind of um, response in all likelihood unless I, I've really worked it. And you'll find this is pretty common for Instagram. This is what people like. It's disappointing because they don't like some of your better stuff, but that's how it works. Oh, and I would mention the very first one, um, I was in New Orleans for Christmas and this building had these Christmas trees and I worked, I did the Google thing, Michael, and I really worked to find the best possible New Orleans hashtags. I used those and it took off. I, I clearly struck a nerve, so to speak, with how I, I posted that one. So 551 is my all time number of likes with 21 comments. Um, I will mention just cause I don't wanna leave it out. If you, you can't do any of the things I've described with the analysis without having a business account. So if you have a personal account, you probably wanna create a separate business account. And business, I mean the account type. Uh, there's, there's three different types of accounts in Instagram. There's a personal, there's a business, and there's a, I forget what they call it, creator. It's an influencer type thing. It, don't go there yet, it's not fully featured. But, um, if you go into your, your mobile app, you can click on the little bars or whatever you've got to go into the menu and there's an insight. And this is really all I use. I don't really use most of this other stuff. So I'm gonna show you this one. And basically under insights, I click on audience because I wanna see, you know, what does my audience look like that Instagram's tracking? So in the last, last week, I think it was last week, um, I netted nine followers. I lost four and I um, picked up 13. Uh, most of my folks are in Washington, New York, Arlington, London. I'm not really sure how I picked up London, but clearly somewhere along the way. Um, the age range, there's the age range. You can do the age range by men or by women. Uh, the genders. 
that follow 54% men. And in this, Instagram will also suggest what time, but their time windows are really large. So 6 a.m., 9 a.m., 12. So that's why I like something like Iconosquare. And that's it. Uh, 46 minutes on my timer. <laughs> All right, I got a couple questions for you. All right. All right, question number one. Um, why Instagram? Why did you land on that as your social media choice when we have Twitter, Facebook, Snapchat, TikTok? Um, Twitter, it's it comes and goes. You, you post something, it has, it moves on. So I've never really been a huge fan of Twitter. Uh, Instagram is a visual social media. It's designed for photo photography. You know, from my point of view, it's the best venue for the photographer. Um, Facebook has come to the point with business accounts that you have to pay. There's just basically simply no other way to get noticed on Facebook without uh, springing, you know, opening your 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 wallets, your checkbooks. Gotcha. Um, I I haven't really fooled with Snapchat. TikTok's coming on, but I think my impression is TikTok is more favorable to video. Just from some of the folks, you know, I I do know on Instagram who link everything back to TikTok. Um, I think Instagram is a great medium. Um, I would suggest you guys have a number of ways to use it. And hopefully, I've made you think of a few. You have, you have. My my next question for you, James, is that when you post an image to Instagram, are you only using single images? Because I know that Instagram has that gallery feature where you can add up to ten images. I never use more. I never post more than one because I'm trying to post every day or every other day. So I don't want to sort of, you know, blow my whole catalog on one post with 10. I think people don't necessarily click through them. And this is my perception, Danny. Um, I don't have scientific. Instagram doesn't publish any of this information, just so you guys know. They don't want you to know what pleases them and what doesn't. So a lot of this is from just trial and error. Um, mm. I, I want to stretch out my catalog, honestly. Oh, well, that makes more sense to me. Um, so, James, when you begin your social media committee, uh, Harry okay. Bosch will be joining you. <laughs> um, so it looks like you guys got a good committee going on starting. A good committee started, so if that's something you want to do. Please let myself or Bruce know, and we'd be happy to, you know, give you the range. Can I take just two minutes, Danny? Can can I, can I take two minutes to tell you guys a quick story that happened this past week? Absolutely. I, I, there was yep. no way, there's no way it would fit here. So I'm sorry if I'm if any, running into anybody's break. So last Friday, I discovered that one of the l very large uh, Instagram accounts in Washington, D.C. stole one of my photos and posted it. Wow. Oh. No credit, no photography credit. I, I didn't even hashtag them or anything. So I reached out by all their means, email, whatever, got nothing. So Sunday I filed a copyright infringement uh, report with Instagram. And uh, I was doing a little bit, because you know, it's weekend, maybe they weren't gonna get me, but I just figured, let's see what Instagram does. So noon on Monday, they froze that site's posting privileges. They took down the image and um, the, the <laughs> The folks reached out to me real quick and said, please, please, please tell Instagram we're okay. <laughs> <laughs> now, now part of it might very well have been, I attached the copyright certificate from the US Copyright Office that went with the, the set of images. But, you know, so Instagram does take it very seriously. And if you look at, if you do any research on Instagram, they do not take your copyright. What they do is by posting it on Instagram, you do allow Instagram to use that image, you know, for their promotional purposes. Sure. Uh, I, yeah. I think they're gonna generally try to credit you. The other yep. thing you'll see in the media is this supposed court ruling a little while ago that, in, that you know, somebody could steal your, your copyright by using Instagram. That Correct. wasn't really what that ruling was. The ruling was that someone had embedded a link essentially to your image. You still had control of your image. Now, whether you like the fact that they could embed it um, or not, you know, you may not like that, but if you clicked on the image on their site, it took them to your, your Instagram. 
So right. you have to you have to evaluate for yourself whether you really think that was, you know, stealing or not. Uh, the court ruled that embedding is different than taking your image. Embedding is not a copyright okay. violation. So a couple gotcha. of nuances like that. Gotcha. So just to let everybody know, while we were on the air tonight, Maryland PPA has gained five new followers. So thank you all for whoever went to uh, follow Maryland PPA. We really appreciate that. So there you go. Uh, all right. Uh, any last questions for James before I, uh, we take a break here and get ready for Bruce? Hey, James, I just have one question. When you research hashtags, how do you determine that they're bad? Do you look um, for errors or do you, if, they're, if it's obvious, if it's an obvious spelling error or? Well, it doesn't matter if the spelling is wrong, frankly. Um, there's some very good hashtags that are misspelled. It's, you know, click on them, look at them. I would evaluate what content's been posted. Like I said, okay. some, some things that are obvious that you think are an obvious hashtag, if you go look at it, you're going to find, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to just disparage any, you know, group, but you're going to find things that you're like, that is not at all what, you know, my brand is. So don't use it. Okay, thanks. So, James, are hashtags um, copyrightable? Because didn't Disney come out with, nobody can use, you know, May the 4th? Was that a big, I don't know if Disney challenged that or not. I, I don't know anything about that topic, Danny. I'm okay. not sure how, I'm not sure how they could possibly be. And plus they probably want, they perhaps want that engagement. I don't know. Yeah. All right, James, this was wonderful. Thank you so much for your time and um, putting this together for us. Everybody, um, please hang out. Go take a little break. Uh, we'll be rejoining, or uh, come back in about 10 minutes. And we'll let Bruce kick off his introduction to frequency separations. But go take a, a bathroom break, go grab a drink, and we will see you guys in 10 minutes.